Hey, this is Jay, and in this video, we're going to take a look at how to do spell cooldowns or weapon cooldowns. So you've got a, a ship rocketing through space, and instead of just holding the fire button down forever, a lot of games have it so that the uh, the gun will heat up, and when it heats up, you've got to let off on it uh, so it can kind of cool down. Or if you're casting a spell, you've got to wait a certain amount of time before you can cast that spell again. In one of my favorite games, Kingdom Rush Frontiers, uh, you can see here that it's, it's a tower defense game, and in the lower left corner, there are three things that you can do, three things you can tap on. Uh, the one clear on the left is ready to go. It's full brightness. You can see, though, that uh, the fire from heaven, raining down from heaven, um, that is about three quarters of the way done. It goes from the top down to the bottom. And the one next to it where you can uh, put the little fighters out wherever you want them, that one is coming up on about halfway done. And, and they... They cool down at different speeds, so I'm gonna get uh, I'm gonna get at least one or maybe even two more of the fighter guys before I can uh, rain more comets and things down from heavens uh, on the guys. So this cooldown thing is going to look kind of like this. So here's here we can we can stab somebody with the sword, and here we can cast a spell. And when I click this button here, you can see that it it dims out, and then in two seconds, because it's got a two second spell to, or cooldown, um, I can click it again. I can't click it while it is still cooling down. Of course, that wouldn't be fair. And the spear, just for the fun of it, I made it so that you have to wait seven seconds. It, kind of those two would be flip-flopped in a real game, maybe, but this is just a demo. So I got seven seconds there. I can go ahead and do this one and still waiting for the spear to come back, but I can cast another spell. So this is the weapon or spell cooldown, and we're going to take a look at that in the code right now. All right, at the top of our code... We're hiding the status bar, and we are using widgets. We're going to be using the widgets for the buttons. You don't have to. You can do this another way. But the, the widget library for buttons for games is actually really cool. And in variables, center X and center Y, that's all I've got there. We'll come back to the functions. Jump down here to miscellaneous code. And all we're doing here is we are calling setup display. So when this, when this main.lua file runs, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to jump down called setup display and so let's go look at that function right here uh, all we're doing is creating the background image and then two buttons uh, this button here is for it's the weapon button and then this button is the spell button and let's take a look real quick at the images for those uh, let's see 97 is there's the there's the spear the weapon button and we have a pressed version of that so we can have uh, some kind of visual representation of when the button is pressed and there's our spell and spell pressed and just for the moment there's the background also so that's what we're doing here in setup display the thing is when we set up weapon button we're saying on release go to tap weapon and th same thing with spell button it goes they, they both go to the same place even though they're going to be doing two different things even though they have different cooldown times now here's the cooldown time for the weapon button I've created a property for this object called wait time, and it's seven for seven seconds. And I call I, I created one called which for which one is this? Uh, it, it is spear. So this is the spear, and down here the spell button. The wait time is two, and uh, which button it is is spell. So now what happens is when one of those buttons is tapped, it goes to tap weapon. So let's take a look at that. And of course, an event record is passed in, and we are going to grab the object that was tapped is at event.target, and we're going to put it in a local variable called button. First thing we're going to do is disable that button so that it can't be clicked again. As long as it's not cooled down, then we don't want to be able to click it, so we're using one of the library routines for the widget buttons, and using set enabled is false. And then we're doing create cooldown and passing in the, the button. And we're also doing do action and, and passing in button dot which. So which is it? Is it the spear or is it the spell? And we'll go to create cooldown in a minute. Let's just go to do action right now. And all we're doing here is just for the demo, if which equals spear, then we're printing stab something. Else if which equals spell, then print z spell cast. So let's go back to... Tap weapon, and the other thing that we didn't look at yet is create cooldown. So this is where the magic happens, and we're passing in the object that was tapped, either the spear button or the spell button. So in create cooldown, first thing we do is delay time. It's a local variable, and it's going to equal wait time, which is being passed in here. Except we didn't pass in anything, did we? So back over here, 
we're not passing in a wait time we're just passing in the button so how does that work well that's what this line is for it says uh, delay time equals wait time or if we didn't pass it in grab object dot wait time which is what we set up in setup display that's this thing here or if that doesn't exist uh, just put a one so it'll be one sec one second so this is kind of cool this uh, it equals this or this or this is the final thing now we have a this is not a shower this is a shower it's something to show okay so we're going to create a display object that is a property of the button that we just clicked so the button that we just clicked is here in object we pass that in right up here you can see and so we're going to say button or object dot shower equals and it's a new rect and it is the size of the button so it's it's there's the X and the Y and the width and the height of that button that was clicked we're setting the fill color to zero which is black we're setting the alpha to five so you can see through it and we're setting anchor Y to zero because we want the anchor to be at the top of this object and I'll show you why in a moment and then because of that we are actually uh, resetting the Y right here so that that new rect that we just created is in the proper position let me just let me just show you what happens if we don't do that it's easier to show you than to tell you so I'm gonna click the spear here and there is our shower that is going away and it is in the wrong spot and that is because we are we are placing it in the same location as the button itself but then we're setting the anchor point to Y which is the top so by repositioning the Y we are we are able to end up with a, a rectangle that covers the button and then moves up to the top and how does it move up to the top that's because we're doing a transition to and we're changing the height of that to zero right before we get that we are taking and setting the the button itself the alpha to point seven and I'll explain why in a moment basically it's just a looks thing and then we're doing a transition too and so we're taking that new rect sitting over the top of the button so it's kind of screening it and we are we are doing a delay time times a thousand because we're passing in in seconds and this needs to be milliseconds so if it's seven seconds seven times a thousand seven thousand milliseconds and the height we are changing to zero over the course of this time and when it is done we are calling a function called we are cool and we're passing in the object and that of course is the object that was passed into this routine so we're just we're just we're paying it forward we're, we're, we're passing it on to the next thing so I mentioned setting the alpha to seven on the button and that is simply so that when you click it there's a difference between partly done and completely done this one's easier to see because it takes longer now right here you've got this button that is very easy to see uh, I mean it's, it's ready to go you it's the the proper look and you could just do that the problem is and this is something that I ran into with the Kingdom Rush Frontiers thing you're sitting there waiting for the fire from heaven to be available again and it is so slow uh, it's a lot more than seven seconds that means when it is almost done it looks like there is like if we get if we get frozen that right there with with two or three lines left uh, it can look like it's ready to go and you're sitting there clicking on it and it's not ready to go by doing this by actually changing the alpha it is still dim you can see that it's uncovering but when it gets right to the end finally there it pops back into existence and you can see that it is ready to go so this is one of those little frosting things you know it's uh it's icing on the cake you don't have to have it but it's a kind of a polished thing it just makes it a little little bit better all right so we have created a new rect put a smack dab over the top of the button change the alpha to five or dot five halfway so that you it kind of screens it and then we have a transition to which over the course of the the delay time changes the height of that new rect to zero pulls it right up to the top and when that is done we go to we are cool passing in the button itself and we're just going to print something on the screen we remove the object dot shower and technically we could go object dot shower equals nil just to really get rid of it and then we're re-enabling the button itself doing set enable to true and setting the alpha for that button back to one so that we know we're ready to go so let's go ahead and look at this again but this time let me open up uh, the terminal 
so that we can see. All right, right down here, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, click the spell. Z cast a spell, and now the spell is cooled down. And here we go, stab something, and I'm clicking here and I can't do anything, but I can still cast a spell. In fact, I can cast a spell twice before that one's ready again. And the spell is cool, the spear is cool, and I can, I can go back to those again. So that's it. It's a, it's a, it's a quick and dirty way to do uh, weapons, uh, weapon cooldowns, spell cooldowns, things like that for whatever cool game that you are working on.